Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Wednesday 18th of December 2013 and today we are taking a look at this video uh, a video by David Vose, David Vose World News called Now Visible Ison as a Dwarf Star with Planet System Following. Let's have a listen to part of David Vose's video. Um, the orbit of Venus around the Sun is about 67 million miles. The Earth actually is about 93 million miles away from the Sun. So it goes the Earth and then Venus and then Mercury. This comet is at the Sun. Venus is 67 million miles away from the Sun. So now Venus is much closer and would look much bigger to our camera Normally, anything that is that far away from Earth, if it was just like NASA had told us, oh, maybe a, a mile and a half wild, you wouldn't be able to see it. This thing is huge. So, yeah, NASA has been lying to us, friends. Let's watch this thing as it's going towards the sun. Now imagine, the sun is not the blue area, the dark blue circle. It's that little round white spot in the middle. Now this thing, perihelium, goes around, comes out the other side, there's Comet Ison. Now the center of that white bright spot that's Ison is probably about a fourth of the size of the Sun. That Sun, if you were to put Earth somewhere in that picture, you would not be able to see Earth at all. It would be smaller than the cursor. Okay, now that circle that's around the cursor is about the size of our sun. And when you put that up there, next to uh, Comet Ison, you can see that the Comet Ison is probably the size of a small sun, or at least the size of, like, larger than Jupiter because if you put Jupiter on this picture you would barely be able to see it the Sun is many times larger than Jupiter and that comet is practically engulfing the entire size of the Sun there now I'm not saying it's as large as the Sun because a lot of that is reflection and if you look at the tail at the very end you see how far it is from one end of the tail to the other that tail is so many millions of miles wide that it's just unbelievable. And the reason that there's two tails rather than one, this is baffling science. The reason is, friends, this thing has 25, 30, 35 different objects in the core. This isn't just one piece. The largest of these pieces is bigger than the Earth. The other I, I don't know how big, but it's huge. It could be bigger than Jupiter. The other pieces that are either orbiting this chunk or or whatever they're doing together there are many of these pieces are the size of Earth, Venus, the Moon. There's 25 to 35 pieces that people have counted. All in this. So here we've heard David Vose making comparisons to uh, the Earth. Venus, the Moon, Jupiter, and so on. Now, there's some fundamental problems with his reasoning in this video, and we're going to explain that. First of all, I'd like to point out, though, of course, the reason that the comet looks so bright, as seen from the spacecraft, is that a lot of the the gas, we're actually seeing that the gas and dust that has been brightly illuminated by the bright sunlight, just as we see in this image of a sunlit aircraft contrail. Now these images of, of sunlit contrails are often mistaken for comets and fireballs and so on. Here we can clearly see the, the aircraft, the, the solid part, which would be a good comparison to a comet. You've got the solid part of the comet as a nucleus. In this case we've got the, the solid part as the aircraft. And then from the back of the aircraft we've got the, the contrail. I'm not getting into the chemtrail debate here. Uh, we've got the contrail, which in this case has been brightly illuminated by the setting or rising sun and so we can see a lot more of that contrail it's 
it's a lot brighter and, and a lot of these other images all you see is the contrail and you can't even see the, the aircraft because it's just too far away. And we're seeing a very similar thing in these images of um, Comet Ison. We can't see the nucleus because it's too small. And in fact it's interesting that even David Vose made that point uh, at the start of his, his description there. He made the point that if, if this thing was really only you know, a, a kilometre or two across, uh, as as NASA are, t are telling us, then we wouldn't be able to see it. Um, hello, has anybody seen Comet Ison with their naked eyes? Uh, I certainly haven't. Now the other problem with his argument, of course, is that um, he's comparing it to the likes of uh, Venus and the Earth and Jupiter and so on. Well, let's take a look at that reasoning as well. He, uh, he pointed out Venus at the beginning of uh, his video and as we all know uh, we can all go out in the evening sky at the moment look up in the sky and what do you see very bright in the western evening sky you're going to see Venus it's very bright and you can't miss it well how big is Venus let's look at a comparison here is the earth on the left and here is Venus on the right the earth is 12,756 kilometers in diameter and Venus is 12,104 kilometers, or if we click uh, miles, we can see 7,926 miles for the Earth on the left, and 7,521 miles for uh, Venus on the right. So we can see that Venus is a very similar size to the Earth. Now, using David Vose's argument, if um, if the nucleus of Comet Ison or parts of the nucleus of Comet Ison were as big as Venus. Well, we should be able to go out, look up in the evening sky now, uh, because it's now in the evening sky for the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, we should be able to go out, look up, and clearly see Comet Ison in the sky, or what's left of it, because he's saying that it's bigger than Venus. Um, but not only that, he says that um, some of these chunks uh, could be actually as big as Jupiter. Well how big would that be compared to the Earth? Well, there's the Earth on the left and there's Jupiter on the right. This thing should be massive if it's as big as uh, David Vose is claiming in his video. But not only that, we've got another problem because, you know, we're comparing it to an Earth-sized object or a Jupiter-sized object. Um, as I said, we can see Venus in our evening sky, we can see Jupiter in our night sky at the moment, and uh, they're both very bright. Venus is the brightest starlight object in the sky, Jupiter is the next brightest. But what about other planets that we can see in the sky? The planets that we can see in the sky with the unaided eye, um, working out from the Sun, are Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. We can all see those very clearly with the unaided eye. Let's compare Mercury to the size of the Earth. As we can see Mercury is quite tiny and uh, when it's in the right position uh, either in the morning sky or in the evening sky you can see Mercury with your unaided eye. You don't need a telescope and uh, so even if Comet Ison, if the nucleus or parts of the nucleus were as big as Mercury then we should have no trouble seeing it, but uh, nobody can see Comet Ison. You need a telescope to be able to see um, Comet Ison, uh, or at least um, you know when it was heading towards the sun, you needed a telescope to see it. Nobody has been able to recover Comet Ison since perihelion, despite claims by some that, that they have photographed it. There have been no confirmed um, photographs of of what's left of Comet Ison since. So once again we see in this video it is a load of nonsense. I've left a comment under David Vose's video um, basically saying the same thing that I've said here. Uh, I said uh, there are some simple problems with the claims you make in this video. At the beginning you show us Venus in the image which is easily visible both in this image and to our naked eyes looking in the night sky. You go on to say that Ison is larger than the Earth. OK, so if that is true, then how do you explain that although we can see Venus with our naked eyes, which is only slightly smaller than the Earth, and we can see Mercury, which is tiny, with our naked eyes, why can't we see Ison, which you claim is larger than the Earth? Do you see the problem? 
Now it'll be interesting to see if David Vose responds to my comment or this video. Um, David Vose, if you're listening, I would certainly be interested in your response and hear what you have to say. Uh, maybe we can discuss your claims one-to-one uh, -one on a Skype interview. I'd be interested to hear your explanations of these problems. As always, do check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.